Okay, everyone. Everyone. Remember, if you're the batter in the on-deck circle and the person before you strikes out, it is your responsibility to see that that person gets a hug. Hey. hey I'm glad you made it. Everybody, Greg's going to fill in for Abby till the baby's born. Sorry I'm late. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Greg, you remember everybody from work? Marcy from the juice bar. Marcy. Oh. Dale teaches channeling aggression and cooking for one. Uh, Susan, our first baseman, teaches beginners acupuncture, and she just finished a two-year relationship, so she's looking for a casual sexual thing. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> and Claire, our center fielder, has six kids. Her oldest is in the Navy. Well, it's either that or due time. It's a cry for help, Claire. All he takes after his rat bastard father. At least he knew his father. <laughs> Uh, you know, the other team, I think, is ready to go, so why don't I just... Yeah, I'll meet everybody while we play. Okay, good idea. Let's play some softball, everybody. Let's kick some butt. <laughs> what? Honey, some of the gang aren't comfortable with that kind of aggression. I just meant that we should, you know, try our best to win. Oh, we, no, that's we not win. Really oh, come on, what's wrong with that? that it, that's, well, it's okay. I'll just... <laughs> That's it, honey. Easy out. No batter. No batter. Time! <laughs> Greg, she can hear you. She's right there. It's just a little chatter. Oh, a little chatter is, hey, nice hat. Looking good. How you been? That's the chatter. What you're saying is me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two outs. Plays it first. <laughs> hey, batter looking good. Nice hat. How you been? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Celia, did you tell Mr. Montgomery that dinner was at 6.30? Yes, Mrs. Montgomery. Did you ask him to repeat it back to you? <laughs> he doesn't like that, Mrs. Montgomery. Maybe he got lost. Driving home? <laughs> Happens to my dad all the time. <laughs> One time he went out for haagen -Dazs. We found him two days later on a Portuguese fishing boat. Made friends he has to this day. <laughs> well, we'll give him a few more minutes before we run down to the docks. <laughs> Um, is there anybody on your team who wasn't there today who can, I don't know, hit or catch or throw? Not really. Why? No reason. I was just playing around with some ideas for a batting order. Now, who was the big bald guy in the leather vest who came to pick up Ernie after the game? Mm, that was Lester, but he prefers to be called Miss Ross. Probably a long shot. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Where could he be? You know, it's pretty windy out there. Does he keep a kite in his trunk? <laughs> All right, we'll just have dinner without him. Come along. Mrs. Dharma, I know where Mr. Montgomery is, but you mustn't tell anyone. Okay. He's having a flink. What's a flink? A flink with a woman. Flink. Oh, how do you know? I clean his clothes, I empty his pockets. A woman knows these things. Have you said anything to Kitty? No. If Mrs. Montgomery finds out, she'll kick him out, and then I'm alone with her. <laughs> Mrs. Dharma, you must do something about it. Well, what can I do, Celia? Remind Mr. Montgomery someone here is going to get hurt. But don't mention me by name. <laughs> I'm sure you're not overreacting. Maybe there's another explanation. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to... Oh, hi, girls. You made me love you, and all the time you knew it. I guess you always knew it. <laughs> oh, he's definitely flinking somebody. Hi, Marcy. Hey, Greg. Is uh, Dharma around? Oh, no, she had to run an errand. I, I, I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, well, I, I should have stopped her. I, I'm sorry. Well, you didn't know I was coming. I know. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, why don't I just leave these with you? There's some uh, books I have on uh, baseball fundamentals that might help the team if, you know, anybody's interested. Thank you. I, I thought you might get a little more enjoyment out of the game, you know, if you got some of the basics down. Oh, we get a lot of enjoyment out of the game. Yeah, I, I, I saw. <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to be critical, Marcy, but I got to tell you, there's a real thrill 
and turn in a double play or making a diving catch to end the inning or, you know, you come to bat down by a run, it's all up to you. Here comes the pitch, it looks good. You, you swing, you feel the sharp crack of the bat hitting the ball. You, you charge down the first baseline. Is it out of here? You don't know, so you run like hell. And all you can hear is the pounding of your heart as you round the bases. Here comes the throw from center field. You dive head first into home plate, safe! <laughs> And next thing you know, you're being held in the air by your teammate. And for once in your life, you're not a social reject hiding behind some wishy-washy, everybody's a winner crap. You're the winner, and they're the losers, and you love it! It's all in the books. Except for the uh, social reject wishy-washy remark. I'm sorry about that. No, 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 we're sorry. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, do, you, do you need a hug? Oh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Give him a hug. So, Edward, I guess you're probably wondering why I asked to see you. Are you and Greg having problems? <laughs> Does he know you've started drinking in the middle of the day? Cranberry juice. Well, he can't get too buzzed off about that, can he? <laughs> Edward, someone told me something about someone that may or may not be true. All right, give me a minute. I'm good at these things. Um... <laughs> No, I'm going to have to have more. If it is true, I want that person to know that I'm there for him or her or them. And I won't criticize or judge. On the other hand, if it isn't true, I'm still there for them, even though there won't really be anything for me to be there for. And did you know that a martini made with an onion instead of an olive is a Gibson? <laughs> Come on, Edward, you know what I'm talking about. If you say so. But listen, I, I hate to drink and run, but... I'm meeting my lady friend. What? And do me a favor, don't say anything about it to Kitty. If she finds out, she'll put the kibosh on the whole thing and there'll go all my fun. Can I trade this in for a Gibson, please? Hey, what are you doing on Sunday? Why? Well, I got roped into playing on Dharma's softball team. We got a big game. I was hoping I could drag you in as a ringer. Dharma's team? Yeah, I know. I know what you're thinking. It sounds flaky, but it's in a real league. Who are you playing? The defending champions. Which would be? David's Enchanted Garden. <laughs> um, David's Enchanted Garden? It's a flower shop, and they're nine and one. Well, I'd really like to help you out, man, but I got a big touch football game on Sunday. We're playing the road company at Kiss Me Kate. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Nice surprise. Yeah, well, I was nearby. How come? Well, that's the thing of it. I don't know if I should tell you. Tell me what? Okay, the person I was just with told me something very personal. Now, he or she didn't specifically say that I shouldn't tell you. But if I tell you, then the person that he or she said I shouldn't talk to about the thing that I went to talk to him or her about is probably someone you would feel you would have to talk to because it affects him or her. And by him or her, I don't mean he or she. I mean the other person. <laughs> Boy, that's a toughie. Tell me about it. So... Do you want to tell me or not? Well, that's the other part of it. It's possible that the personal thing this person told me about is none of my business. And as a matter of fact, it's more your business than my business, but it's none of my business to decide if something's your business because it's really their business. Whose business? He or she and him or her, plus the other one. I don't know about the other and one. And I don't think you should. Then don't tell me. Okay, okay bye. <laughs> See you, Pete. See ya. Man. Jay and I could communicate the way you two do, we'd still be married. Dude, I have no idea what she was talking about. Yeah, but she didn't throw a pot of hot beans on you. Yep, she's a keeper. Hello, Dharma. Is this a bad time? Not yet. What's up? Dharma, there's something I need to talk to you about. Oh, gee, wish I could, Kitty, but I gotta get over to the field and help Greg warm up the sheep. I beg your pardon. Um, our softball team, Greg, thought we should have a cool name like the Panthers or the Hawks, and there's a series of compromises, and anyway, we're the sheep. <laughs> Sit down, Dom. Okay. I asked Edward where he was the other night, and he insists that he was with you. Yeah, he was. We had drinks. Uh-huh. He said it was dinner. He was out quite late. Well... It started out as drinks, and then I said, I'm getting a little hungry, and he said he was too, so we asked for a table, and there was one, and we sat down at it, and then they brought us menus, and we just chose something different to eat, and then they brought 
them, and they were very tasty hot at first, so we had to let it cool down, and then we ate it, and then we said, ah, oh, it's getting a little late, and he agreed, and, and then I said, see you later, alligator, and he said, in a while, crocodile, and then we made like a tree and leaved. So he is seeing another woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. Edward's a very handsome, powerful man. This sort of thing was bound to happen eventually. Are you saying you're okay with this? Oh, darling. These sort of dalliances are fleeting, and, and frankly, I need some free time to myself. I'm redoing the upstairs. <laughs> so. Wow. I was cheated on once, and it made me feel like my whole world was crashing in on me. And it wasn't even that serious of a relationship, because I knew he was going to leave eventually when Cirque du Soleil went to Seattle. <laughs> well, my world is certainly not collapsing. Well, that's amazing, because I was a wreck. And... This was only a two-month thing. You and Edward have been together for 30 years. 33 years. 33 years. <laughs> I just don't understand why. I mean, we have our problems, but we've been getting along so well lately. Well, that's good. Let it out. Let it out. Oh, all these years. I've stood behind him in the good times and the, in the bad times. I bore him a son. You bore him a son. I tolerated a horrible mother-in-law. Do you have any idea what that's like? I can imagine it. Oh, well. What's done is done. It's time to move on. So what are you going to do? I'm going to take him for everything he's worth. <laughs> the cars, the houses, I'm going to call the lawyers, have all the assets put in my name. He's going to pay for this. Oh, kitty, 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 slow down. Don't you think you should go to Edward and let him know how you feel? You're right. I should let him know how I feel. Whoa, hey! <laughs> Give me the bat. Don't worry, I have enough money to get away with one murder. <laughs> the Fine, I'll just run him over with the car. Hey, how about I drive? <laughs> Strike one! I, I'm sorry, sir. That's okay, kiddo. Wait for your pitch. If it looks good, take a poke at it. Strike two! I'm, I'm sorry. Time! Listen to me. Here's what I want you to do. The next time that ball comes, I want you to focus all the anger you have deep inside on that ball. Oh, my. That ball is everyone who ever put you down, everyone who ever ignored you or called you a name, every boy who didn't ask you out in high school. I was on the prom committee and I didn't even get to go. Yeah, get, use that. Get mad. Oh, the fiend was under the sea, and I was drowning in loneliness. And, and you were really angry at these people, I right? No, no, no. It wasn't their fault. It was my fault. I was, I was very shy. <laughs> I'm going to need another minute. So this is where she lives. An apartment. I should have known. Too bad you didn't, because then we wouldn't have had to make Celia cry the way we did. Oh, please, that wasn't real crying. Trust me, I've made her cry. <laughs> Hold on a second. What exactly are you hoping to accomplish here? I want to make Edward rue the day that he was born, to regret each and every godforsaken moment he has spent on this planet, and to pray for the swift release of death. <laughs> We better feed the meter then. Hey, Greg. Oh, Larry. Thanks for coming. I uh, need all the help I can get. I'm here to play. Right. Honey, are you wearing your cup? Have it. It's softball. I don't have to wear the cup. Oh, Larry, you promised. No one else is wearing one. I don't believe that. Greg, are you doing anything to protect your genitals? <laughs> Just try to be careful. Susan, um, Larry's gonna bat for you. Why? Uh, well, he's our ringer. What do you know about baseball? Are you kidding me? I grew up in New York. I lived and breathed baseball when I was a kid. Stick ball on the street, sandlot, little league. And when school was out, my old man would take me to Ebbets Field to see the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie Robinson, Pee Wee Reese, Duke Snyder. Then when the Dodgers left for Los Angeles, I was crushed. I was betrayed. And I swore I would never have anything else to do with baseball for the rest of my life. Come on, Abby. We're out of here. <laughs> I swear, if I find the two of them in bed together... Remember, you just get the one murder. <laughs> this is it. Wait. 
Are you sure you want to see what's on the other side of that door? Because once you open it, there's no turning back. I need to know. B5. <laughs> Edward? Kitty. It's not what you think. It's certainly not what I thought. I-16. I-16. And what on earth? Uh, hold on, hold on, Kitty. Uh, I think that did it for me. I-16, bingo! <laughs> You're on fire, Eddie. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, cash this in for me, will you? Uh, if I have a choice, I want the little radio. <laughs> Is that your lady friend? Yep. That's Ruby. But what I, I don't understand, what are you doing here? Oh, who knows how these things start, Kitty. <laughs> it was raining one day, I ducked under an awning, and there was Ruby. We get to talking about life and how much we both like soup. And then um, she mentions that she just lost her bridge partner. And uh, next thing you know, it's Canasta on Tuesday, Bingo on Sunday, and once a month we have Monte Carlo nights. <laughs> For heaven's sakes, Edward, if you want to sit and play card games with boring old people, we have a country club full of them. Well, I, I kind of prefer it here. Uh, everybody's very quiet and nice, and uh, they have sponge cake. <laughs> Please, let's go. Oh, Kitty, that's not the answer. If this is something Edward enjoys, don't you think you should share it with him? Oh, no, Dharma, that's, uh, uh, that's not necessary. Kitty! <laughs> Radio. Do you want the salt shakers or the travel toiletry kit? Yeah, let's have a look, hon. You see, Kitty, if you drag him away from here, he's just going to go looking for what he needs someplace else. And maybe it won't be Bingle with Ruby. Maybe it'll be Mahjong with Sylvia or some dark church basement quilting with Mildred. <laughs> and you'll be the one who put the needle in his hand. Oh, this is ridiculous. Is it? <laughs> Oh, all right. Edward, if you have some inexplicable passion for the inane, I should be able to, to sit beside you and endure it. Oh, there's the kibosh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Where you been? You'll find out. What I miss? Two and a half hours of misery. <laughs> oh, what's up with you guys? What happened to that sheep spirit? I'll tell you what happened. We're getting our butts handed to us in a paper sack. <laughs> we always get our butts handed to us in a paper sack. Yeah, but thanks to Charlie Hustle here, now we feel bad about it. <laughs> Come on, sheep. It's only 38 to nothing. There's still a lot of baseball left to play. Right, Greg? Not really, Marcy. <laughs> Sorry. Honey, you want to go in there and get the last out for us and then come back and help the gang burn me an effigy? I'd be honored. Okay, let's hear a little chatter. Ah, bite me. That's enough chatter. Strike one. Strike two! I was B12. thinking 
thinking of doing one of the well, upstairs guest rooms in early American. Oh, not that colonial reproduction nonsense, but vintage pieces. Oh, it'll be a lot of weekends at the auctions, but it'll be worth it in the end. Oh, 71. Oh, 71. Pay attention, Edward. You have oh, 71. <laughs> I don't know why you bother playing the game if you're not going to pay attention. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>